Hey there, David Teal in the Popwood shop again. We've got a tip today that's great for hanging cabinets in your shop and hanging cabinets anywhere. We want to talk about a French cleat, but let's revisit this cabinet here. We put this up for a uh, I Can Do That project a while back, and we basically have a three quarter inch back in it that we screwed four screws into the studs in the wall. Now that's great, that works out fine, and it keeps it tight to the wall, but one of the things we had to do when we put it up is put a screw in, mess with it, leveling it up, trying to get it right, and then get the screw in there again. The French cleat gives us a couple of different options, and I'll show you why, and the beauty of it is, you start with just a scrap of leftover plywood. First, tip the blade over to a 45 degree angle. 45 isn't an exact concern, but pretty darn close is a good idea. Next, draw a line approximately where your cut needs to be at the center of the board. Don't think that that's actually half of your board width, because this three inch piece actually needs to be cut at inch and an eighth to make the cut in the center. Set your blade height so it's cutting adequately above the piece, but not too much. Make the pass through the blade, being careful to use a push stick to keep your fingers safe. You might notice that a little bit of piece might be left over with the cut. A simple hand plane will take that off and make it a smooth flush cut. And that's essentially how you make a French cleat with a 45 degree angle. Now let's take a look at how simple it is to add to the cabinet. Now, in our cabinet situation, we have it with a flush back, but let me show you something else that's really great with a French cleat. Say you have a, a hidden shelf, a floating shelf type of a thing, or a cabinet that you want to fit right snug up against the wall. Well, a little planning ahead makes it simple. If this is our cabinet frame and we've thought far enough ahead, then our back can be set three quarters of an inch in, and then the French cleat sneaks in here, right behind it, and disappears, leaving a flush, tight fit to the back of the wall. In our case, our back is already flush because it's just a shop cabinet and we're not deeply worried about it. So we've got that flush and we're gonna go ahead and mount the French cleat right to the cabinet like that. How you mount the cleat to the top of the cabinet here is important because you want it to make a groove here that will grab the piece mounted to the wall. If you hang it the other way, this just doesn't work. So with my top cleat attached, I've obviously got an offset from my back. So I've added a second piece of the same thickness to keep the offset even from top to bottom. With one screw in the center of the board, it's very easy to find level so you don't have to fuss with the whole cabinet. Just the strip is fine, then go ahead and put your end screws in place. With your cleat on the wall, it's a simple step of taking your cabinet, hooking it over, and dropping it in place right there. Nice and sturdy with a lot of bearing surface. And you're ready to go. Now, when I mention go, that's also the case too because it's not permanent to the wall. If it's something that you need to take to work and bring back, take it off, do your work, slap it back on the wall and you're done. That's our French cleat tip for today.